Last time on Math for Game Developers, it's actually uh, it's actually many times ago on Math for Game Developers, we created a matrix using our translation and rotation matrices, and this actually has a name. It's called a rigid body matrix. Rigid body, because this is a matrix that you can use to rotate and, and move around a rigid body without doing any scaling or any funny business that would change its shape. And then after that we made an M inverse that was R inverse T inverse which will which would uh, invert the original rig, uh, rigid body matrix. And <clears throat> So what we're going to try and do now is we're going to try and make it, figure out what M inverse is, but assuming that we don't know the original TR matrix. If you remember, the way we originally made our, our M is by multiplying T times R, and then we saved T times R and inverted them, and then multiplied them together. We inverted them here and then multiplied them together in order to get M inverse. But actually, this is, is not how it happens. You don't usually save your T and R matrix. You throw them away. And But now you're saying, why would you throw away your TR matrix? You kind of need them to get M inverse. Well, actually, you don't. So let's build, let's build an M matrix from T and R. If you remember, T looked like this. X zero one zero Y zero zero one Z zero 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 one, where these guys right here, I'm going to call them T. This was your translation, and then we multiplied that by R, which was up here a big three by three matrix, which I'm just going to say forward, right, and up, three vectors right here, and then the rest were zeros and one. And that was R, and this was T. So let's simplify this using a slightly different notation. It's actually called a, a block matrix rotation. Here on the top left, you'll notice that we have an identity matrix. So I just write I right here. And then I'll write the T, because this guy is T, and then a zero vector, and then a one. This is the same thing. This is T written just in a different way. And now I'm going to write R, this upper 3 by 3 matrix. Here it was an identity. And here I'm going to write R3. It's just whatever rotations are here, I'm going to condense that into R3. And this is 0, 0, 1. If we multiply that out, this is R, we should get, uh, we go rows here and columns here. So I times R3 plus t times 0, so plus 0. And then we're going to go row and column. i times r3, I'm sorry, i times 0, and then t times 1. So that's just t, and then 0, 1. And this is m. This is the matrix that we want to invert. And you can see that the original information, the rotation and the translation, is sitting right there. We don't need the original TRs because there they are right there in our matrix. So let's see what the inverse matrix looks like. I'm going to draw M inverse here, and that's R inverse T inverse. So let's look at what R inverse looks like. I'm just going to skip right to the blocks ma block matrix. If you remember from our uh, block matrix, I'm sorry, if you remember from our inverse video, finding an inverse of a matrix, you can invert a rotation matrix just by doing its transpose. And uh, maybe I'll put right here, I hope I get that right, a link to the to the matrix inversion videos. Right here, yeah. And then let's see, 0, 0, 1. And then what was T inverse? So this is R inverse. What was T inverse? Well, an identity up here, and then negative t, because we're going to move it the opposite direction, 0, 1. And so this is t inverse. So if we want to multiply these two bad boys together, let's see what we get. R, t, R, trans, R3 transpose times i, that's just R3 transpose. So that was this row and this column. Now let's do this row and this column. 
That's R3 transpose times I, R3 transpose, I'm sorry, times, yes, times I. Um, no, times negative T, R3, yes, I can do this. I can do my, my, I can do this. R3 transpose times negative T plus zero. So negative T, I'm gonna put this T here, and a negative T right there. And then this comes out to zero, one. So this is our M inverse. That's all there is, folks. We have we know what R3 is. It's this three by three matrix on the upper left of our of our original M matrix. So all we have to do is transpose that and then take that transpose, multiply it by the vector T, which is up here on the bot on the top right, and take it negative, that'll be our new translation. So let's go to the code and implement this faster matrix inversion. Now here we are implementing our function. You'll see we have a lot of asserts. These asserts, what they do is they assert, obviously, that some invariant things remain true. And in our case, we want our forward vector's length to always be exactly one. And so our first three asserts uh, will verify this. If it's not true, then when we're in the debugger, the debugger will say, hey, check out this line of code. You wanted it to be true, but it's false. You should check that out. And so the first three lines of code, like I said, they make sure the vectors are all length one, the basis vectors of our matrix. And the second three, they make sure that all three of the basis vectors are orthogonal to each other, or in other words, their dot products are zero, with a little bit of an error. It's okay to be almost zero. So let's implement this function. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a 4x4 four four matrix, capital M. I use capital M because lowercase m is, is the data for this matrix class. Now you may notice that I left out the scaling matrix. The scaling matrix uh, would have made things just a little bit more complicated than they had to be. So I left that out, and this is my challenge to do a little bit of homework. Do the same stuff that I did. Um, but include the scaling matrix. See if you can make that work. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, so I left it out of the video, but it's not much more complicated. I think you could do it. So here you can see I'm setting the matrix M, the upper three by three, to be the transpose. You see here I said IJ, and here I said JI. So I switched around the indexes that will transpose the upper three by three matrix. Now I'm going to set the translation part to be the negative of this three by three transposed that I just made times the translation from the original matrix. And then return M. So <clears throat> because this is an inverted TR without an S, I've gone and made all of our props um, I've set them all not to have any scaling at all, which in, in, in my experience, uh, this is mostly what you're going to have. You're not really going to have a lot of scaling, and you can see even, even the rotating ones should be correct. Most, most of the time your characters are regular size, and so you don't need to, to have a, a scaling inverse function. You can do everything without scaling. Um, so that's it. It looks like this works. Next time, I think we're going to be talking about coordinate spaces and all, of, all the coordinate spaces that your graphics library uses to calculate how to draw things on your screen. Really cool stuff. I'll see you next time.